All right, we're we're back, fellas. Did you miss us? Sorry about that. Switching software. Um, in the chat, let us know if this sounds better. Because again, this is my fault. I'm trying something new, trying to improve, trying to get on Joe's level when it comes to all of this fancy tech and everything. So please forgive me. Uh, where, where were we before we were doing it? Oh yeah, we had coaches already in here. What's going on, uh, y'all? We are going to be talking about getting better as a football coach. And how we're going to do that is, Joe, first off, how long have you been coaching? 18 years. Wow. 17, wow. 18. Okay, so getting into it. If you could go back in time and tell yourself one thing as a new coach, what would it be? Uh, I mean, the first thing that pops in my head is don't take it so seriously, but I think I have to, I have to qualify that some, uh, which is like, it's, I mean, maybe that is, it, it's not that serious. I mean, it's, what do you mean by that? It's just like, not like look, team wise, player wise. I mean, everything, you know, we're so on edge. We're so competitive. We're so, uh, maybe detail oriented and like, it has to be this and you got to do this and you got to be in this way and do this and do this and do this and this. And we're, and then we justify it by saying like, no, this is the discipline that you, this is the, what kids need so that football is going to change their life down the road. There's a truth to that, but at the same time, like it's supposed to be a fun game for everybody involved. It's a game. Well, and you're talking about like 5% of your kids. No, less than five, 3% tops might get a college, might get a partial college scholarship. Even um, the rest of them are going to go play D three. And then we're talking about, you know, one in a billion is going to go play in the NFL and actually make a living. Like football's not that serious. And I like that. This is one of the many, many reasons why I like you. Uh, you're one of the few defensive guys, and I've gotten a lot of shade thrown my way that simplify defense and kind of like pull back, say, hey, it doesn't have to be that sim- that that intense. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to get in your face and just scream and yell and everything like that. Right. And I have found that especially this year because of COVID, it, it backfires like tremendously like i don't i've talked to a lot of coaches i'm sure you have too the kids were a lot moodier this year rightfully so because you know this threw a monkey wrench and a lot of stuff but not taking it as serious and actually enjoying the process Mm -hmm. i feel like made the relationships as woo woo as that sounds with the kids a little bit deeper i think that you get a sense that this is not a guarantee. This is not a, you don't have a right to coach or play football and you don't have to coach or play football. Neither one. You, 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 you both don't have the right to do it and you don't, you are not forced to do it. It's something we all choose to do. And if we choose to do something, we should generally at least enjoy the outcome. Yeah. Um, you know, we may not enjoy, we're never going to enjoy every minute of practice. We're never going to enjoy, although guys will tell you that. And I'm like, well, you're a freaking robot. <laughs> um, but, but there is a feeling that like, this is something that we do because we enjoy it. There are other things in life. Football is not just part of the endless cycle of life where every year we show up and it's fall and we play football or coach football. Like they, we have options and choices and kids start to realize that. And I think coaches will mistake that as I'm going to go on a tangent here for a minute because you said we could talk about anything. Take it. I think coaches start to think like that that is an indication that these kids are weak, and I disagree. Yeah. I think it's an indication that these kids understand that they have options in life and that they can do other things. Um, and I think that if you go back to back in the day, back in the good old days, there was a feeling that if you were a tough male, a a strong american male that you should be playing football and if you're not you're some kind of wuss and kids have freedom to make decisions um and understand that football is not required of them i played with a lot of guys and i'm sure you did too that played football because dad expected them to yep and they didn't even like it yep a ton of them and i I completely agree and i kind of get mad when coaches all blame Fortnite or you know call of duty or something like that like Fortnite sucks Exactly. <laughs> that, like, that, like the kids are just playing video games. And dude, come one nerd to another. I play my fair share of football games. Like, if, yeah. In, oh, I see. I, I see your gamer score. Ah, uh, dude. I got you on there. I'm, I'm not up to your level yet with the with the PC gaming and building the computer. Have you finished uh, that build yet? It's all. It's all. It's an ongoing process. But yeah, I think 
Um, we, we said anything and everything. Uh, you know, the shortage for the uh, the graphics cards killed me because yeah. it was time, right? I mean, I had the graphics card. I bought a budget one kind of two years ago. I bought an RX 580, and I was ready to get the brand new, the 3080 um, NVIDIA, and you can't get them anywhere. It's just like PS5s and Xbox Series X. Yeah. So I ended Thanks up shelling out. I ended up shelling out for a, a 5700. It's a good card. Oh, you're speaking Spanish. I don't. I know. I, I, I know. I know. Somebody out there might understand, but yes, it is. It is not complete, but as complete as it's getting in the time period that we are in, where we have chip shortages and you know all that stuff. All because of Bitcoin. And then, coaches, thank you so much for yeah. popping in. Uh, I'm here with Joe Daniel. We've got. Let us know in the chat where are you from. If you like this and it sounds good, please give it a thumbs up. We got Coach Bates in the house. Good evening, sir. Coach Robbins, hello. Todd, my man, what's going on? I'm going to be honest, Joe. I think Todd has a better uh, shaved head than you. I'm just a little little biased right there. Willie, what's going hey, on? Hey, Willie. <laughs> Willie, what's going on? Johnny, how are you doing, sir? Coach Scott in the house. Flexbone 101, yes. He's up in Michigan doing it. Huge fan of yours for years. Oh, what are your thoughts on the flex? If you had to gun to your head, Flexbone or wing tee? Wing T. Really? Why? Um, I think you can do a lot of the elements of Flexbone within a wing T. I just and again, I, I'm not I'm not as versed on the Flexbone as I am on the Wing T, but I think the Wing T is the closest in similarity to the pistol power offense system in that we can literally do anything we want. We can and I know you can too, but in my mind, Wing yeah. T, pistol power offense, I can do anything I want out of those two systems. And I understand it already. Okay. Hey, hold on. I got a follow up question to that, but you're not alone. Chris, look at that. Just built my first PC. Also got a 5700. Look at that. Look at that. Nerds unite. Yes. 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 Nerds of the world. <laughs> All right. And on the flip side, though, defensive coordinator, what would you rather go against, the flex bone or the wing tee? Probably the wing tee. <laughs> okay. So you would rather <laughs> run the wing tee. Why is it that you would rather defend I think the wing tee? Um, because I gave up 77. I didn't, I was a linebacker coach. So we'll pin that on Ricky Coon. Uh, <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> who's the city now? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was the whole staff. It was everybody. It actually wasn't either one of us. If I was going to be completely honest, but, um, we give up 77 points to the muskie gun, which is essentially a pistol flex bone, uh, in 2009 at Ellsworth when I was at junior college. And, um, we finished ranked 24th in the country. And that was with giving up 70 in defense. Finished first in offense, ninth in the country overall, but 24th in the country in defense after giving up 77 points in one game. Dude, to that, to, to we were, the pistol flex bone? We were up 21 to seven. Dude, there's so many beers involved in explaining what went wrong, but 21 to seven, we were up, just blocked a punt at the end of the first quarter. And that then, is, oh God. And then the wheel. So I don't ever want to see a flex bone again. I don't, oh man. Okay. Yeah. What are your thoughts, though, on the Flexbone under center? Like, if you had to pick, because I'm going deep, I really like this kind of stuff. Would you rather face a Flexbone team that's under center or a Flexbone team that's in the pistol? In general, I would rather face a team that is in the pistol because I would, I would guess that they are trying to do more. Now, if they're just talented enough to do more, then – give me the under center team that can only go under center and run the ball. But in general, I would expect a team that is under center to be more likely to run the base flex bone option, better downhill quarterback, getting up into the line, uh, never losing yardage. You know, the old school veer type split back veer never loses yardage um, to whereas I would think that the team that was in the pistol was more likely to drop back and throw and do some things and maybe not be as sharp on the option. That's just a guess. I mean, you yeah. know, obviously, I want to see film, but it's just based on those that one thing. Yeah, I, I agree, and that's the reason why a lot of teams go into the pistol because they want to start dabbling a little bit more and throwing and everything like that. Okay, circling back, you tell yourself you're your brand new coach. You come back, you're like, "Hey, don't take it so serious." Reflecting, and I know I'm putting you on the spot. Was there something that you could have done better as a first, second, or third year coach? 
My first year is a total blur. There was nothing that I could have done different. Um, I I was not happy. I was saved, and I actually talked about this on podcast. I was saved at the end of my first my first year. Um, I did not work for. Uh, I don't like to throw people under the bus, but I was not in a place where I was really being supported in my growth. Uh, and when I got into wrestling season, I was like, I, I remember January of my wrestling season, and, I, and and my head wrestling coach, who was a varsity offensive line coach, was like. Um, he was talking about, so the county that I was in had two schools. One of the schools was a smaller school that didn't have a wrestling program, and I was at the other one. And he said, well, if they started a wrestling program, would you go, do you think you could be the head coach? And I was like, well, yeah. And he's like, well, what if they started, a, what were they just starting a football program? I was like, no. And he's like, but you didn't wrestle. I wrestled my freshman year of high school. He's like, but you weren't a wrestler, but you were a college football player. I'm like, yeah. And he kind of showed me, like, not he, he wasn't doing this to – uh, to his own horn, but he had given me confidence as a wrestling coach that I had not gotten as a football coach. Um, to the point that even though I knew Jack all about wrestling, I felt confident enough to run a wrestling program compared to a football program. Um, and I think I started on the right path the next couple of years, but I, I never grasped the fact it was years and years and years, a decade more. I never grasped, like, it was so long before I understood, like, yelling and screaming doesn't fix anything. Um, I mean, that's what I would have fixed. And, and, and the problem now is, after you've done it for 12, 15 years, you catch yourself falling back into those old traps. Um, to the point that one of the jobs that I left was because I went to the doctor and they were like, you're starting to get high blood pressure. I was like, oh, wow. I'm like, what? I'm like 35 years old. I was like, I'm out. Um, and then I, I realized I had to change some things. So I would, this is what, this is the mindset that I would change. I don't even remember the question. This is the mindset that I would change. Every single one of these kids wants to do it right. And if they're not doing it right, that's on you. If you, so the cliche, and, and there's a reason why we use cliches that they're, they're cliches for a reason. If it's happening on the film, it's because the coaches are on the field. The coach is allowing it. See, I hate that one. Okay. Because so so no, that's garbage. That's, <laughs> um, no, but I think that that also goes to like again back to the idea that these kids don't have any free will. Like sometimes the kid's just doing what he's doing, and it's not being allowed, but it hasn't been because that almost that almost goes the other way of like, well, this coach is a piece of trash. He's letting this kid go out there and play like garbage, or he's letting this kid go out there and do it's not that simple. Like I'm trying to teach you, you're trying to learn. And it's, an, it's an, like, it doesn't matter how much I want to and how much you want to, we've got to figure out how to meet. There's lots of things I want to be. I want to program mobile apps. And I can't tell you how many mobile app uh, really courses that I've done and just mm -hmm. none of them have clicked with me. I'm not dumb, but not at all. None okay, of what, what's liquid. your million? What what's like? The idea is like, oh shit, that that is a million dollar thing. I just need to program this shit as fast as possible, and I'm the next Mark Zuckerberg. I think I just want to do it. Like, I really, there, there's not like nothing. I've done things like timer at practice timers. They're mostly related to football because I, you know I'm gonna. I would like to start with my own. I've, I've thought about a practice timer. I want one, and I made one. This, do you have it where it syncs up to everybody's phone? No. Like I want to no, create a piece of garbage because I didn't know how to make it. So I had a guy in Bangladesh and it, it looked cool and it wasn't bad, but it, it I want one it. where if I'm the head coach, I set up the entire team practice on my phone. It sends it to everybody else's phone and we're on the same page. So yeah. I don't have to have someone up in the box, keeping up a score or something like that, or with the time, or I have to keep looking down. Yeah. God, yeah. see, you're, you're so smart. I didn't say anything, but yeah. But um, you're agreeing with me, so you're smart. I am. <laughs> well, we we'll go with that. Uh, I mean, simple things that like we just need. Like, I, I don't know. It's not like I want to program mobile apps to make a million dollars. I just think it's interesting. Yeah. Um, but it's never clicked with me. It, just the the process has never clicked with me. Programming in general, I love the the idea of programming. And I've gone through Python courses and I've gone through uh, all sorts of different things and. Yeah. 
because I've thought about, you know, programming web apps and all these sorts of things. And I get into them for a while. And then it's just like, this isn't, this isn't clicking. Like I'll get to a point. Foreign language is the same for me. And until I go to a foreign country, I'm not going to, and Montreal doesn't work because as soon as they realize in Montreal that you don't speak French, they start speaking English. Cause they're so and, nice. Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, I want to stumble through this. Those, those freaking Canadians and, Canadians, yeah. we love you. But I don't think the Canadians are allowing it, you know? Yeah. I think that, like, it's not their fault that I can't speak French. <laughs> the Montrealians, the Quebecans, the, the Quebecers. Yes, yes. All right, I'm going to touch on that because I think there's an interesting parallel with that where you just fall in love with something for a little bit. I think we all do it mm -hmm. and then fall out of love with it. That's just human nature. And as football coaches, why don't we allow the kids to do the same thing? Sometimes I'm really gung-ho with football and then other times like I really don't feel like going out there in the summer at 7:30 in the morning to run 300 yard gassers while a grown ass man is yelling at me. So why don't we allow the kids to just Yeah, take why that? why is it, why don't we just take a step back? A lot of football coaches don't take a step back and be like I can kind of put myself in the the player's shoes. I'm amazed by the guys who don't take December off. I can't yeah. imagine. I cannot imagine. Um or who like you know, I don't, I don't know how it is everywhere, but we have dead periods. I assume you guys do. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay. So in a dead period, there's, you know, there's always schools that are breaking the dead period rules, right? Always. I'm like, please God, give me a dead period. Like, do we have a dead period coming up soon? Thank you. Send these kids home. But I need somebody. But at the same time, I need somebody to tell me this is the time period you need to be off. I'm a notorious rule follower. Like, I'm, I'm just not a rule breaker. If there's a rule, I'm like, it must be for a reason. I'm going to follow it. And, um, like, yeah, you know, if a kid isn't coming to workouts, we're like, well, this kid's not committed. Yeah. And sometimes a kid just needs to figure things out or go play another sport, which I think at least football coaches are generally supportive of playing. Other I sports. agree. I think a lot of football coaches are like, hey, go play basketball, go play track or baseball or something like that. I nope. completely agree. Go ahead. But what we always are trying to get them to do is get a lift in, right? Yeah, always, always. Hey, I know you got a game Me too. today. But uh, yeah, go oh, squat yeah, I'm like, real quick. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go talk to their coach and be like, hey, listen, I never want to interfere with you. I don't want to interfere with your games. But, you know, if you just got to practice on Monday and you don't have a game till Wednesday, like, can you come in and hit a max squat? I'm just asking. Like, you know, I remember I remember the first time that I heard this idea. Not first time I heard this idea, but I was like so entranced by it. This is like 2007. It's my first Glazier Clinic in Atlanta. First one I went to, and the coach there is from Parkview High School in Atlanta, where Jeff Francoeur and uh, Brian McCann played. Um, played baseball, played football, played everything. These are baseball players, by the way, for those of you that don't like stickball. Um, and they played for the Braves, and so I was a big Braves fan. I'm from Atlanta. And, uh, he was talking about Jeff Francoeur pitching, pitched the first game. I think it was Parkview against Lasseter. He pitched the first game of the state championship game. And none of this matters to anybody but me. And, and uh, uh, Willie will know because he's from Alpharetta. Uh, it's part of you against Lasseter and uh, Jeff Francoeur pitches the first game and then he bats the second game. He goes four for four in the second game. Uh, that morning, he hit a 300 pound power clean uh, max. Good Lord. And I'm like, that's amazing. That means that everybody can do it. <laughs> not processing Jeff Francoeur. You know, he's not in the Hall of Fame, but this is a professional athlete. Yeah. One of the one of the few that get to make it to that level. Yeah. This is a professional athlete not your yeah. regular kid. All right. So how do you go? A lot of coaches I talk to assume that they can create a five, four skinny kid into like a six, eight Alabama five-star stud. Okay. Anybody can. <laughs> how do how do you talk to those coaches? Be like, Hey, had temper your expectations just a little bit. I mean, yeah, you've just got to, I mean, your whole goal is not ultimately, yeah, your goal, you have to win. We talk about this when we, when we do, you know, I did a coaching philosophy course in January. And one of the things that we went through over and over again is look, we all love this lovey dovey, you know, coaching cliche kind of thing of like, I'm in it for the kids. I want the kids to be men of character. We're going to develop men of character. You won't develop many of them if you're Owen 30. Thank so you. at the end of the day, you have to win. But ultimately, the way that you win those games is you pull the most out of the kids that you have. You maximize their ability. 
everybody, this is not law of attraction. This is not, you know, we don't just get to wish our way into the NFL. Like if I just believe enough, I'll be in the NFL. That's not how it works. And so you look at the kids who's five foot four and you go, how can he fit into our system? How can I maximize his talents? How can I get him to do the most that he possibly can? How can I make sure that he gets the most as possible out of football? And then at the end of the day, you're happy with that. You know, I think we did a good job. I, I freaking love that. And that is what kind of makes a great football coach when you think about it is they understand that, they apply that, and they get the most from the kids that they have. And we're going to talk about that because you have something cool coming up, and I'm just, just nibbling that out there. But, uh, coaches, again, thank you so much for joining us. Todd, man, congrats on getting his first W nice. as a head coach. Congratulations. He, for both of us. So, <laughs> Todd, high fives and butt slaps, buddy, and Joe, for you too, man, for the defense. Great job. Yeah, I don't do the butt slap thing. I do. I love ass. I'm sorry. I hey, man. <laughs> Under center is easier to to hide fakes in the wing T. You are you are absolutely right. I would be under center in the wing T. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, I would too. So you're not a pistol wing T guy. No, no, no. I really like under center. I just found that I really like throwing, and in the, in our system, throwing is we're we're very very balanced, and I found that our quarterbacks are much more comfortable in pistol. Um, I if I could get quarterbacks to be more comfortable under center, and I'm not a quarterback guy. So, like, you know, that's not my specialty. Uh, I'm an offensive line guy. If I could get quarterbacks to throw from under center more comfortably, then I would be under center 100% of the time, just like Bill Mountjoy wants us to be. But I'll tell you what, when these kids go to camps, what are they doing the whole time? The shotgun. They're gone all the time. Yeah. That is, and I, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. I wish I could – help my kids understand or like I know a little bit about it but just the the technical stuff like yeah of everything I I feel like I can't coach them well enough and I'm the type of coach that if I don't know it well enough I'm not going to try to BS the kid and get them there and that kind of ties into sometimes my kids ask should I go to a trainer and what do you what are your thoughts on trainers before I talk about that I like to make sure that I know a trainer they should go to yes that's what um, I was going to say yeah, don't just go to a trainer. But if I know a trainer that you should go to, um, it's like long snapping. Dude, I will never – I mean, I will coach a kid in long snapping because I've been to the camp. But every single kid that I have as a long snapper, I've desperately tried to get to Rubio long snapping. Because Rubio – I've taken kids down there. I took a kid down there. He could barely snap the ball six yards behind him. He was rolling the thing back. 8 a.m. that morning in Charlotte. And at 4 p.m. that afternoon, he was zipping it. Heck I yeah, mean, man. the dude's a miracle work. Yeah, I'm the same way. If if I know that – I'm afraid that kids go to trainers if the trainers are a charlatan. Like, they're just after yeah. the money. If, if I think I, a lot of them are. Yes. They might not know they are. but Exactly. Know. But then when I research and I'm like, hey, this guy is really good. He knows what he's doing. Go at it. I am not one of those coaches that's like, hey, that is my kid. Right. He can't do anything else. No, I mean, if you want to pay the money and get better and you're helping me with my stuff, go for it, man. Do it. And I wish if I could find a guy who was really, really good at teaching under center, because like you mentioned, under center is much more technical. Yes. And it's one of those things where you go, okay, if you could throw from under center, if you could really teach the technical aspects of it, it is better. Mm -hmm. But it is so much harder to teach than just snapping it back there and he's already at five yards. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, when you talk timing routes, bam, 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 hitch and throw. Like, I mean, the five-step is going to be exact dead on. His steps are going to match up with the receiver's steps perfectly. You can't get that from a gun because the snap is just not as consistent. Yeah, and I, my favorite is under center run and shoot. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that is my favorite because you can do so much. And it, Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> It's cute. <laughs> All right, I stand on the wing tee, and I know y'all are going to say something about wing tee. If you only had to run one, buck sweep or jet? Buck sweep. See, I'm a jet guy, man. Jets is jets a show. Jets no, a, I jets I just show. think it works better. You can still have the yeah. same stuff. I know I'm I'm those yeah. wing tee purists. They're like, so why do you say it's just a show? Jets a jets a setup. Jets a setup. I can defend jet with with essentially one guy, one and a half guys. Um, 
Now, there's some really good Jet teams. I, I know. I'm exaggerating. But Buck requires everyone on at least half the defense to play it correctly. Um, and there's more opportunity to me in Buck for a breakdown. I just need one of your guys to screw up. One of your guys to do it wrong. Whereas in Jet, I think I, I – well, I take that back. Both of them, I need one of your guys to do it. But it can be one of five or six guys compared to one of two or three guys. Okay. All right. Interesting. I see. I love picking the brain of uh, defensive coaches about that because I've been on a really big jet kick mm-hmm. this offseason. I always pick one thing I want to learn a little bit more about, and that is, for me, offensively, the jet. Defensively, dude, I am really trying, and maybe you can help me out. I am struggling with the Nick Saban kind of coverages. Like yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know him because I, I don't care. And why is that? Uh, they just they don't apply to me. I've I've studied them and I've learned them and I understand them um, to an extent, but I understand them enough to know that I don't care. Um, I, <laughs> people will ask me like, well, "What do you know about Coach Such and Such out in Tuscal, not Tuscaloosa, you know, Oklahoma or something like that?" And I'm like, you know, some coordinator for a D two school that's doing really well, and I'm like, I'm sure he's brilliant. I don't care at this point. I have my stuff. Um. Are there things that I want to learn more about? Yes, I want to learn more about five man protections. Um, but in general, I have my stuff, and I spend a lot of my time trying to figure out how to better teach my stuff, both to coaches and to players. What, um, you're really big, correct me if I'm wrong, cover three, right? One high, um, to say I'm really big on it is, is incorrect i guess to say that i think a lot of schools a lot of teams need to be running cover three because they're trying to run pattern match split field coverages and they're getting smoked they're blowing coverages you're just not ready for it um and and you know start out in cover three and get really good at it if you're zero and ten you're not ready for split field coverage your kids got to tie their shoes first so let's get lined up. Let's get our alignment right. Let's have basic coverages, fewer breakdowns, give up less big plays. And then when we get to be good football players in cover three, cover one, I love split field. And, and I will say over and over again, my ideal defense is a four, three quarters. Miami four, three quarters coverage. But I need certain players for that. I need coaches for that. And that's a long way down the road. And if I don't have those players, I'm not that good in that defense. All right, help me out here because my stupid self, I still can't get this. How does quarters coverage turn into nine in the box? Quarters coverage turns into nine in the box because you have um, – you your two high safeties are lined up at about nine yards. Um, now, obviously, if you go into two by two and you've got a burner in the slot, that's going to be there. I can't line them up at nine yards. But let's say that you've got a – you know, let's say you've got an eye formation. Let's just start gotcha. really simple eye gotcha. formation. Okay? I can line those guys up at nine yards off, eight to nine yards off. Let's say we're playing a wing tee. I've got nine in the box now, a traditional wing tee. I've got nine in the box because those two cats are eight to nine yards off. They're key reading whatever you key read. I key read quarterback. So they're key reading ball up, ball down quarterback, and they're coming down in the box right now. Um, now, that's all. I used to really, really be a big proponent of that. Our 425, almost all of our coaches, they're 425. They're cover threes. They're not in the box. That free safety is a linebacker at 10 yards. So, and he's your best player. So he's going to, he's going to beat half your linebackers there. So we just play with nine in the box, beat us with the pass. And I, I like that philosophy coming from a defense. I played defense in high school. I played defense in college. I started out on the defensive side of the ball. I could probably count on one hand how many teams actually beat us with the pass. Yeah. Whereas I can, I, I'm not smart enough to count the amount of times we've lost based on the run. Yeah. And the guys who will argue that point with you a lot of the times, this is not against, not against anybody who's struggling, but you'll have a guy argue with you and be like, well, you can't do that. Teams are going to throw all over you. And that guy's three and seven. It's like, Hey man, just beat the, one, <laughs> beat the ones who can only run. Yeah. If we do that, you can at least get to 500 and then we'll worry about the ones that can throw, but let's, let's walk before we run. Let's get to five. If we're three and seven, we want to get to five. Everybody wants to get this magic bullet 
that yes. takes them from one and nine to you know fifteen and zero state champions, and it does happen. But get from three and seven to five and five, and give yourself another year in your job, and then you can figure out how to get to seven and three and into the playoffs and win a playoff game and all that sort of stuff. Just you know, settle down. <laughs> I agree. It's not and that serious. Can you rem- can you remember how many times you got beat on just the straight up four verts play? I only remember one. So, and how many games have you actually coached in yeah, yeah, in 18 years? Whatever, Let's say yeah. 180. You just add 10. Yeah, just, okay. That's one out of 180. And yeah, you're going to number one. Yeah. And you're going to start off all the time worried about the four verts. Like this yeah. coverage can't defend cover our four verts. Therefore, we can't run it. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I, I very specifically remember one game where we went in with a cover three philosophy, uh, a cover three plan. And this team hit us with four verts. That's the only time I remember it happening. So again, that's where I go. Yeah, I do like cover three because a lot of teams cannot make you pay for it. No, they can't. And that's coming from a guy that likes to throw the ball. Hmm. Me too. I do I too. Mean, it's, and it's most crazy. of the time, mo- a lot of the teams that I've beaten throwing the ball, it wasn't because they were running cover three. It was because they were playing with bad technique on the corners and I could throw easy hitches. Or it was because they were trying to run coverages they couldn't run blowing man coverages and not able to get to the quarterback or they were um blowing split field coverages by just losing guys very rarely even i've had some good quarterbacks and very rarely have we thrown on a team because they were cover three i never look at it and go oh they're running cover three they're dead (laughs) and that's i like that man and you do i actually you do throw the ball a lot in your pistol Mm -hmm. power offense Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and but you have mirror routes, don't you? Yeah. Very lame. Very How, lame. Yes. Okay. Walk me through that. How do you teach your quarterback which side of the field to go to in the mirrored routes? We call the side now. What we used to do was we had a series of things for him to look through, and we found out that he doesn't look through all of that. Um, really? <laughs> yeah. Shockingly. Uh, so we will call the side that we want to throw to based on game plan and based on what we know, a lot of time based on matchup. Then Now, he has checks. But it's all about protection. It's the, the, the everything is tied into protection. If he can't get time, then it doesn't matter. But I promise you, if I give him seven on seven time, if I give him four seconds, you're getting ripped to shreds. I mean, you're getting he's getting ripped to shreds too because the ball's supposed to be out in two point three. What are you doing holding the ball that long? However, if he has four, somebody's open. Somebody's open somewhere. Um, so how do I decide? How does he decide? He, he goes through trigger reads. Um, and so basically that is we have our call side. Now he can check it based on what the coverage looks like, where he sees the open space. And a lot of it is I need him to recognize it's cover one, cover three, cover two, whatever it is. But basically he's only recognizing that so that he can recognize where do I expect the open space to be? Where do I expect the green grass to be? Um, and then what he's going to do is he's going to read uh, for underneath routes. He's going to read the backside linebacker. And for deeper routes, he's going to read the backside safety or the middle of the field safety. And as long as that safety stays backside or that linebacker stays backside, he's throwing call side. Okay. If that guy rotates, then he'll go to the opposite side. And what it does is we always end up with numbers. We always end up with numbers. Nice, man. That's I like that. It's uh, not mine. It's Bill Mountjoy. And who, who, incidentally, I don't know if he's watching. I, I've always been a big fan. I know he's he's gone around. Uh, Coach Huey, he emailed mm-hmm. me the other day. Did he? When I yeah, when I talked about how we're doing this podcast, he shot me a, an email with his cell phone, and I know that's sacred right there. Oh man, he loves to talk. He, he was like, "Hey, if you want to talk, here's a cell phone." I'm like, "Holy, I'm, he's the man. He's the I'm man." I'm gonna hit him up. Yeah, he's the man. He's you're gonna get it. You're gonna get an hour or two of of knowledge. That's I mean, he'll, dude, he'll spill it. I'll soak it into this big dome yeah. of mine, man. No, he'll spill it. But yeah, that's his. That's what I learned. From, that's one of the things we learned from him. Um, is the trigger reads, and it's I mean, legitimately. It sounds so. And by the way, we're we're we are redoing the um, the pistol power offense system right now. The pistol, the uh, pass protection. We've done the run game, base run game, inside zone, outside zone, power counter, truck toss. Uh, those modules are have been released. The pass protection is the next module to be released, which will be released this week, probably tomorrow, um, if not tomorrow, then Saturday. But um, but this weekend, it'll be out. Pass protection is actually going to come before the routes and all that other stuff, but it all ties together. And we're going to get much more detailed in this because I have a much better understanding six years later of how to teach it to someone else. Um, but all of that stuff from coach Mountjoy is just like, it literally, it seems so simple, 
mirrored routes because you see all these guys running all this air raid stuff. It's a bunch of garbage. It's all lies. You're all being fed. Bite, bite your tongue, sir. <laughs> bite your tongue. <laughs> but, it, but it's so much, like you said, mirrored routes. How can that? Yeah. That was what I was like. I was like, no, you got to have a cover two and a cover three. Got to. But how many teams run cover two and cover three? Again, back to the core right. argument. How You're many right. teams really run cover two and cover three well? Not that many. Not none on our schedule. I yeah, I have yet to see a cover two. And I'm gonna be honest, my oh, yeah. I don't even run Smash anymore. <laughs> no, no. And this year with COVID, we had to simplify things. Like literally, we had two runs. We had counter and we had inside zone. Mm-hmm. And then our passes was four verts. And this is what really made our four verts. I knew that the teams were in the quarter coverage. We ran everybody vertical. So that apex linebacker. He had to wall off to kind of go with them a couple of – we just ran the the running back off to the flat. There was nobody there. We just dumped it off. And yeah, we ran don't overcomplicate it. That was it. That was like our whole thing. Six is a great concept. I mean, yes. six is a great – yeah. I found – It was four verts. I, it, I love four verts. I found that I tried to make it too difficult by falling in love with with Mike Leach and what how much – you know, give him the read and stuff like that. Yeah, and I wasn't good teaching it that way. I talked to a guy that ran – he's at Clemson now. Yeah, Kyle Richardson. I freaking love that dude. He developed a way to run four verts for the high school level where he figured out, flare the back, always have – and he would tell the quarterback which way to go. Hey, you're starting on the right. Know that the left, the X or the L, is a 15-yard comeback. So there's your bailout. You always have mm-hmm. a bailout built in. Mm-hmm. He never let his guys read, and that actually worked, man. Because I find yeah. that if you let the kids read it, it they struggle a little bit because it takes time, and we didn't have time during COVID. Yeah, and see, like for us, four verts is not a major concept. It's it's in there, in a way, but it's really quick game, and we're basically looking like, all right, can I throw a fade? Because if I can throw a fade, I'll throw a fade. If if I think I've got that matchup, if I think I've got that look, I'm throwing a fade. If I can, I'm reading off the safety. If I don't like it, I'm throwing it over the fade kid's head. <laughs> like that's where I, or or throwing the check down to the back. But like it's not a major concept for us, you know. But we're thrown for a lot of yards out of it, even yeah. even though we don't, because hey, sometimes we just win one, you know. LFF, let the girl fly. I yeah. freaking love it, coaches. Again, thank you so much for being here. I'm with Coach Joe Daniel. If you find this entertaining and they're getting anything from it, give us a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm gets it out there. We have a couple of questions in the chat that I want to throw up for you, Coach. Uh, Robin says, how do you guys deal with parents? I'm never wanting to go to the high school level because parents are crazy. I know what I do. I pass them to the head coach. <laughs> oh, you, you, you want to uh, hold on. Hey coach, you got a, you got a parent real quick. That's yeah, above my pay grade. Um, <laughs> yes. I was very fortunate again. I was only head coach. And, and again, for most of my career, I've been an assistant and my head coaches luckily were like, that falls on me because as a head coach, here's what you need to know. As a head coach, there are a lot of things I want my assistants to handle, but one of them is not parents because that's a meeting. And if I have an assistant coach who decides to go off on a parent, it's not the assistant coach that has the meeting. I mean, he'll be in it, but it's me as the head coach. I was very fortunate as a head coach. Um, I had some crazy parents. We all do. And parents are crazy about their kids and they have every right to be. That's the only one they've got. And, you know, you're a parent, you know, like this, this, this little brat is important to you like you know more important than anything else in the world so yeah parents are a little crazy and sometimes they're a little off and i think if you accept that you just kind of deal with the fact that that is a thing yeah you feel better about it and i think if you just try to you know don't take it as like this parent is attacking me um but this parent is protecting their child and they should be and they have every right to be um most parents aren't crazy there will always be one or two I was very fortunate as a head coach. I had one parent come in to have a discussion with me about playing time. It ended with him writing a $500 check, not for playing time. Ooh, nice. But we, I explained the situation. I explained where we were. He was relatively receptive, and then he donated to the program. And it was like, nice. good. Me- that was the only meeting I had about playing time all year. I, I love that, man. Of course, your slick-talking self. Hey, by the way, man. Um, By the way, would you like to buy a membership to GDFB yeah. Insider? Because five hundred dollars, can you yeah. do that? <laughs> I have found I haven't had that many for football, but I have for parent-teacher conferences for teachers, mm-hmm. 
And I find that same thing with kids, as long as you explain the why, um, parents are fine. Now, again, you will have one or two that just they just want to yell. But and if you understand that it's not about you, it's just something's going on with them. Like maybe they had a bad day. Maybe, you know, they ate something bad and their stomach hurts. I don't know. But it's usually not about you. And you take yourself out of the equation. They kind of calm down a little bit and they realize, oh, this guy's not really out to get my kid. Yeah, you just don't. Yeah, you just can't be combative with people. Um as much as you want to be. And again, it's in our nature as, you know, macho men is like to fight everybody. And sometimes you just don't need to fight the fight. You just say, look, I'm not fighting with you. I'm not changing necessarily. And I'll explain all of my reasoning to you, but I'm not fighting with you. I'm not doing this. Yeah. It's almost, to, and, uh, this sounds bad. Uh, nothing good ever comes after you say that when you go it, but it's like when your wife just wants to vent and you just kind of just sit there. Oh yeah. The, okay. Okay. You know, like, <laughs> no, no, no. Like she's just <laughs> venting and you know, we yeah. want to offer suggestions and the research yeah. backs this up that we're like, okay, this is how you fix it. And they, they don't, don't want, want you to fix no. it. They just want to vent. This is the same thing with parents. They kind of just want to vent sometimes and you just let it. And the next thing you know, it's like, okay, I'm good. I've seen more than one parent. Now, again, a lot of this is somebody else running the meeting and I'm just in it. Uh, you know, a head coach that I'm working for running the meeting. I've seen more than one parent come in attacking the head coach and end up breaking down, crying on the head coach's shoulder. Yeah. Because it wasn't about the head coach. It was yeah. about, you know, you know, dad's doing something and mom doesn't know how to handle this or dad's gone. And I was at a, I was at a, uh, a Fort Lee. So a lot of our dads would be gone. Right. Mm -hmm. And mom's just kids. Dad's gone. Kids going off wild because dad's deployed. And mom doesn't know how to handle it. And she's coming into that head coach and she's starting that meeting with why isn't my son starting? It has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. There's always a ulterior motive. And I don't say that in a bad way. Like there's something no, else no, yeah. behind that. There's other things going on that they, they, they may, they may in their mind think if I can get him to start in football, he will be more committed and he will stop running around all night. Yeah. But you know, that's just like, that's not the, you you sell stuff. When you try to sell stuff, you try to get to the root of why somebody might buy it. Not like, you know, not just the the surface yeah. uh, idea. And that's when somebody comes in trying to attack you, you get to the root of what the problem is. It takes some patience. I don't have that much. It does. And yeah, again, that's where I go. Hey, boss man is right that way. So Go don't be it. in a hurry to be a head coach. <laughs> I agree. I agree. That uh, glad you brought that up. I'm going to get to the other questions as questions, but this year I was, I was like, I want to be a head coach. I, I shot my shot for every single opening, but after this year and plan for the new, our coaching with my new head coach, coach Adams, shout out to you. It was nice. I was like, I like this. I like where I'm at. I have the staff is awesome. I'm not in a hurry. Because I saw how crazy it was. It was like, I know head being a head coach is crazy, but then when you pour a pandemic on top of it, yeah. I was like, oh my goodness. I know I am so glad I am not a head coach right now. I had a head coach. Uh, he's a, a, one of the people I've been talking about that I worked for for years. Um, he's been the head coach for years at this school. He's moving to athletic director, but because of the hiring processes and everything, he's still the head coach for this we're you know we're playing spring season so guys are teaching in other places and it's a mess and so he's essentially taking on head coach and athletic director role in the middle of a freaking pandemic in a state that's not playing until the spring you want that job no i don't i don't no not at all not at all absolutely not i will be the coordinator all day yes i'll be a position coach man yeah i'll coach middle school holders over that <laughs> All right. Uh, Dave was talking about when we were saying how we weren't very quarterback technicians under center and knowing that uh, kids have a BS detector. I think their BS detector has gotten a heck of a lot better since I have been teaching. Like my kids can see through the BS flat out. It's it's almost a superpower. You're looking like you don't believe so. I agree that there's a BS detector, but I don't know that that means that you can't teach something that you're not an expert in. I think you can tell the kids. We're, we're working on this. I, I, I agree. I don't know everything. 
I agree. And I think I if you mistakes. if you teach them like that, they'll understand. But I, if you come, but yes, like, you can't come out fit like a like a arrogant. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. But you can definitely do things that you don't know everything about by telling the kids, "I don't know everything about this, but yes. I really want to try it, and, and I think it'll be great." And again, it's giving them that reasoning. They actually respect that when you mm-hmm. say it. Absolutely. They're like, oh, this guy is being because not that many coaches I have found the longer I'm doing it are honest with their kids. Not that many adults have the humility yes. in front of a essentially a child um, or an adolescent, at least not that many have the humility to say those things because um, we feel like we're letting them know like, hey, I'm not Superman because look, I mean, those of us of a certain age that were raised a certain way, our dad was Superman. Yeah, I mean, and and we feel like we need to be Superman too. And, and then there's that whole vulnerability. Oh, we're getting deep here, man. That men just can't show. Like yeah. we kind of got to have. We got to know it all. We yeah. got to know it all. And if we don't know it all, we're going to pretend like we know it all. And if you call me out on it, you're threatening my power dynamic and all that. There's there. It's a it's nice to see some coaches. Now I think a lot of them are BSers. I generally have a. Uh, skeptical opinion of a lot of college head coaches. Um, but it's nice to see that everybody doesn't have to be Bear Bryant, Nick Saban, Bill Belichick, and know everything and be tough all the time. Those guys are fantastic. There's absolutely nothing wrong with those guys, but those guys are legends. Yeah. Um, and there's a feeling among a lot of coaches, myself included, for a long time, that we have to be that way in order to be any good at this game. Um, and we see guys – who are a little more vulnerable as a coach. Now they're not allowed to be as much as they probably should be because of the media. Um, but they sometimes will show that vulnerability with their players that lets you know, everybody's not bear Bryant. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't understand. I, I don't like bear Bryant. I know that's sacrilegious because of the techniques, how he just goes all the way to five and then just messes up after that. I, I, I still get confused sometimes. My dyslexia. Well, you're not smart enough. I'm not. I'll be. I, I'm. I'm not a an app. I don't understand. Guru. I don't understand it either. I just know it is. It just is. Like it's. You know. I don't know. It man. just is. All right, Coach Austin wants to know: as a one in six team historically teaching man coverage, is it unrealistic to think after the first half of next season teaching cover three that we could be ready to go split coverage late in the season? This is this is you, buddy. It's not a good idea. Why? Split coverage. Here's what you need to do if you're going to be. This is my my opinion, and it counts for nothing. Everything. I know. Um, cover three is very easy to teach and very cheap. If you are going to be a base cover one team, if you're going to be a, a, a secondary cover one team and just run a little bit of it, you can dabble. Um, but if you're going to be a base cover one team, the way that we run it with press man uh, and, and off man inside, or if you're going to be a split field coverage team, you need to be running that from whenever your seven on seven starts, March, April, whatever you get to do, June, July, whatever. you need to be running that nonstop all the time. You cannot install split field coverage late in the season because you will have blown coverages. When you run cover three, you do not have blown coverages because it is a spot drop if you're doing it correctly. Not correctly. There's, If you're doing it the way that we teach it, I don't like I, – I don't see any reason to pattern match three. I think if you want to pattern match, you go quarters. If you want to play a safe coverage, you play cover three, and you want to be simple, um, and you're not ready for it. Now, having patience. Go through the full season as a cover three team with cover one as a, as a secondary coverage, I would still run cover one all through seven on seven, then run cover three as my base so that we got the technique down the following season. When your kids have a little football IQ, when your kids have a little confidence, when you've had a little success, then go split field. If you're still one in six, you're not ready for split field because you're not beating the teams that can, can beat you. that can't beat a cover three. And we've already discussed. There's a lot of teams that can't beat a cover three. Not, not, there's hardly any. So you're, so at that point, you're prioritizing scheme over just getting better at football, which is confidence, playing fast, all those sorts of things. That's see, that's we're kindred spirits, man. Simplicity. Yeah, we, got we got that. I love despite it. this, despite that air raid thing. This, yeah, I hate you. All right. <laughs> I love it. I love air raid so much, and I just like. Here's the crazy thing: you man. can't do everything, so you just got to hate the other guys. I 
even though I'm an air raid guy, we were 50 50 run pass. Yeah, they should throw you out of the club. They really should. And the crazy thing is, I was seeing drop eight. And yeah, there was literally one time this season we ran the ball like 40 times. They just got, dude, they were a four man front and they were twisting. And when they twisted, the tackles just dropped back in pass coverage. Yeah. So it was just the ends. And I was like, why are you doing this? I'm just going to run it. And we ran counter like 30 out of the 40 times. And then I felt dirty afterwards. So I had to take a bath because we didn't throw yeah. it that much. We played a team who came out in, they doubled. Now, both of our receivers, our outside receivers, ended up being all state. Um, they doubled both of them. We also had an all region rusher running back, first team all region running back. So it was like a five man box. And again, we have a tight end and an H back. <laughs> you know, we're in, we're in essentially 21 personnel and they've got double coverage on our outside guys. There's only seven guys left on the field against nine, a nine man box. It was like, I know we can throw and not that many people in our area throw, but you're defending the wrong thing. Yeah. You know. And as a coach, do you sit? How do you fight that urge to get away from doing something over and over again, like in a game? Like it, I'm, I've, sometimes when you do something over and over again, I feel like I'm kind of cheating because they haven't adjusted. It's almost like you know you're beating up a younger sibling and they just can't fight back. Are you just like piss on it, man? I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Once your team understands what you're doing, once your team understands who you are and what you do, and they can look at a defense and understand this defense is wrong, they will delight in just doing what we do. I'm not doing anything complicated. I'm running power because you've got, you know, a, a wide nine and a, and a three, you know, and they just know, like, look at all this space. We're going to run power. Or they know that you're playing. They know that three to five yards off of, an, of a receiver is no man's land. And so if you're lining your corner up at three yards every single down on an all-state receiver, we're throwing fades. Yeah. We're just throwing fades. And it's not because that kid's bad. It's because we're Ours trying to just better. We're trying to help you. We're trying to help you understand you cannot play that technique. <laughs> You're not going to beat us, but we want you to beat the next one. All right. Coach says he learned so much from us too. Uh thank you. Thank you for the kind words, sir. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. David wants to know out of a three five three cover three, how much are you bringing pressure? Me. Yeah. You don't run a three five three cover three. Not um, <laughs> only in Madden. <laughs> is it? I didn't even know it was an option. I got to check out Game Pass because uh, Madden's on there now. Yes, um, that's dude. EA that Game Pass thing is it's the greatest thing. I got to get on that. That's the greatest thing. Um, so it's interesting when you talk about three five three cover three. Uh, when you talk about three five three pressures, because the fact is you have three down linemen. So if you just say pressures every ninety percent of the time, we're bringing four. But to me, that's just a base rush. I'm never drop eight, not never, but very, very rarely am I going to drop eight. Um, so if you're just talking about how much are we bringing for 90% of snaps, how much are we bringing five or more, which five becomes a zone blitz, six becomes a man blitz. How much are we doing that? Th that to me is going to depend a lot on the coach. It's going to depend a lot on the team. It's going to depend a lot on the scheme. It's going to depend a lot on who we're playing. I used to blitz a lot. I'm more likely to just be bringing four. Um, if one linebacker blitzes most of the time. But um, we have a coach, uh, Dan McLean, who's a uh, head coach up in De uh, Detroit County Day School, C Country Day School, um, just won a state title this year. He's man, and he doesn't run exactly our 353, but he's been a cl uh, client with JDFE for a long time. He's been on the podcast. He's bringing it all the time, right? Nice. He's bringing it all the time. It's still the coach simple philosophy idea. Um, so I guess, Dave, the, the answer is this. My philosophy on the 353 is not about how much we blitz or how much we bring this. It's about creating fronts. When I look at your offense, I say, you know what I'd really like to be in against this? Against this? I'd like to be in an under front, and I'm going to run blitzes that create an under front. Or I'd like to be in an over front, and I'm going to run blitzes that create an over front. I'd like to be in a bear front. I'm going to run blitzes and stunts that create a bear front. And so how much do I want to create those fronts based on situation? Situationally, if I think you're going to be running in the A gaps, I want to create a bear front. And so I'll bring five that creates that. Nice. Great answer, man. I freaking hate going. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Three, five, three. I don't know why more teams don't run it. It's tough. It's tough. In fact, one of the toughest teams that we've played in the last few years was running a 3 5 three. Um, They were a base 3-4 team, and they, they brought a six-man in the box. Uh, for years, Bill Mountjoy swore and swore and swore and swore and still does that odd front and stack front are the same. 
Um, and I had to make, I had to make exceptions for that. I don't do everything that Bill says. Um, I had to make exceptions for it because it just wasn't. And then eventually I got a packet of stuff from Bill about here's how you handle three, five, three. I was yeah, like, I, okay, thanks buddy. And then he, and then he denied it, you know? <laughs> All right, Coach Burns, where to see the coach that I base my defense off of to become a DC and the coach that I switch to offense base my offense on the same stream? Dude, I, I'm – Joe, what is this? This is like our fourth or fifth one total. Something like that. We've done a lot of them, yeah. It's, it's like we're married together, man. I know. I don't have that <laughs> – I don't have many friends, so. I, I, just... I have, I have uh, the TD Lab members and then <laughs> my – my family. That's, that's pretty much it. I don't have enough time. I really, I don't, this year has just been nuts. Yeah. All right. Rich says, I tell my players that the coaches on the other teams probably know more football than I do, which is true, but that neither them nor I am playing. I, I completely agree. Completely yeah. agree, man. I run into a lot of guys um, who know way more football than I do. Way more football than I do. Yeah. And, and they may even be more successful than I am as a coach, but I don't think that they could work with 600, a thousand, 2000, 3000, however many coaches that I've worked with and have the kind of success that, that I've had as a teacher of other coaches, just because knowing more doesn't mean anything. It's, can you teach it? And, and I think that I have a good ability to teach coaches how to teach and that's what matters and that is the freaking perfect segue because you have something that that you're doing right now it was a good segue <laughs> it was a great segue tell tell everybody that doesn't know what you have going on right now and why it's probably the coolest crap i'm, I'm trying not to cuss that much because youtube yeah. doesn't like it the coolest thing that's probably going on right now no they don't they oh. really don't Ooh. i don't cuss much at all so um you don't have to worry about me so uh what we have right now right is uh the spring 2021 enrollment for the football coaching 101 series of courses and i basically had this idea and i'll tell you where the idea came from was was a while back i said what head coaches need more than anything there's a lot of head coaches that really know what they're doing and what's going on but we have a very very difficult time finding a quality staff and you can find guys that are willing and that want to and want to be involved but you have to educate those guys. So originally this course was, was originated as a way for head coaches to educate assistant coaches. But what I found was that a lot of assistant coaches want to be educated on their own. And a lot of head coaches like to be educated more as well. Um, so football coaching 101 started out, it was going to be this little course and it just snowballed and it became football coaching 101, which football coaching 101 is level one of this, of this package. Level one is about, these are the things that I think every football coach should know. And coach, you know that a lot of coaches, you've seen some of it. These are things that most coaches don't get for five years, six years, seven years. Yeah. Uh, even though I think it's absolutely necessary that we know in order to be a good contributor to your staff. So that's football coaching 101. It's about um, 19 things that every football coach should know. That's how it starts off with. And then it goes into offensive playbook design and defensive playbook design so that you understand if you want to contribute something in a staff meeting, it can't just be some off the wall crap. It has to fit into the playbook, drill design, special teams design, and how to watch film as a coach. And then it was snowballed into football coaching mastery, which to me is if I were a head coach and I did a good job and I haven't always done it, if I did a good job, these are the things that I would expect after a year of working with me that you would know. These are offensive and defensive play design. This is understanding how timing of like things that we were talking about earlier, why under center is superior to pistol for passing, but why it doesn't work as well. Yeah. It's understanding timing. It's understanding why the running back needs to, uh, why on an outside zone does the running back need to make his decision on the third step and his cut on the fifth step? Because the offensive linemen are making their decision on the third step and then moving, and he's got to set it up for two more steps before he cuts. It's understanding the timing of an offensive play. It's understanding how defensive plays work, uh, how field zones work. Um, that's football coaching mastery. Those two things, I think, every, I think even football fans would would love to know. Level three is coordinator master class. Level three, and by the way, if you, as you purchase a level, if you purchase level three, you get level two and level one as well. There's no, you know, you don't just get one. Coordinator master classes for coaches who want to become a coordinator, uh, or are a coordinator now, or are a head coach, and that's about how to. Um, offensive and defensive game planning. That's offensive and defensive play calling. Uh, that is uh, game management. That is practice planning. Um, that is how to be a coordinator. Those are the things that you need to do 
to be a good coordinator uh, beyond just knowing some X's and O's because knowing X's and O's, every coach on your staff should understand X's and O's. That doesn't make you a coordinator. Being a coordinator is understanding how to attack an opponent, how to prepare your team to attack an opponent. Uh, and that's coordinator masterclass. So uh, right now it's open enrollment. Um, open enrollment period is only until Tuesday night, uh, March 30th at midnight Eastern because my software doesn't allow me to push it to Pacific. Sorry. Um, so Tuesday night, midnight Eastern. I used to just always say like it closes a, at three at midnight Pacific and then I would just shut it down like when I woke up in the morning. Um, but, you know, it closes at midnight Eastern. That enrollment period closes uh, to get into football coaching mastery. And the link, I believe, is down in the description. Yeah, the link below. is in the description. I put it in chat. And I'm be honest, man. I, when I was coming up, like you, I had a head coach that was an ass. Like, almost made me want to quit this profession. He was I almost a bully. Did. It was awful. I didn't learn anything. I wish I had something like this because – I had to piecemeal this. It literally took like six or seven years. Six Search years, the internet, years. try to find something, put it together, hope it works. If it didn't work, I would have to go back to my Google and set up the alarms and everything like that. It is really good, man. It's, I really like going through it. It's 15, 20 years of, of, and the added benefit again, that, that I have and that you have that, that the average coach doesn't have of we've also seen this process we've seen hundreds thousands of coaches go through this process and seen them stumble through the learning process and known where the hang-ups are and how to help a coach get through those hang-ups to advance faster because ultimately that's our job everyone if they work hard enough will get to that level it's just a matter of is it going to take them 25 years the average the average state championship coach and it is the 2013 American football monthly survey. I don't have anything more recent, but the numbers are pretty similar in 2014 or 2012. Um, 25 years of coaching before they won their, their state championship. And that's a state championship coach, right? Most of us won't ever win one of those. Most of them have been head coaches for 13 years. That means 12 years as an assistant, 13 years as a head coach, 25 years before you reach the pinnacle of the sport where you want to be. Do you want to, and we'll all at 25 years, we'll all, mostly all be pretty good coaches. None of us want to wait that long. No. None of us want. And I've had a lot of coaches who have 25 years and they're like, man, this took me just, just like I, I wasn't there yet. Yeah. It's like a cheat code. Yeah. It's, All it's, right. it's about the learning curve and just, we got to get rid of it. Coach wants to know, will this help him get started as a coach? And I'm going to just, just me personally. Yes. I, I truly do. Because this is what happens. I see a lot of coaches go, Hey, how do I get into it? Like I want to, how do I start volunteering? And you go and be a volunteer, but it, you will get a leg up if you already know what to do as a coach when you go volunteer. A lot of volunteers are just there just to get a shirt. And I, I can tell you, and I know you can as well, if you have a volunteer that actually knows football, the moment there's an opening, it's just like, hey, come on. Yeah. I've already worked for you. I, yeah. I already know what you do. I know that you know the stuff. Let's go. Come on. Volunteers, come on are, volunteers are getting stipend positions way before – if you're on a staff, uh, but coach, I would tell you, go listen to the podcast this week, season nine, episode two on how to get a football coach, a high school football coaching job. Um, because I go directly through that process. So, and we got, we've podcast. got a guest. We've got a guest. Come here, buddy. What's up, bud? Connor, my man's here. <laughs> my man's here. He walked up. He was like, daddy's not beside me. So, what man. is going on? Can you say, Hey, Connor? Hey. hey, he says, Hey, so just hang out, buddy, while daddy talks. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Y'all know how it is. You, you, you've been live, you know, Connor, my man, he, he doesn't realize what's going on, but, um, dude, what, what made you decide to, to put this thing on? Like I said, I thought, I thought that there was a need for head football coaches to be able to educate there. And I mentioned that for me, football mastery, football coaching mastery was what I would want, um, coaches who had worked for me for a year to understand. And I realized at the end of my first year as a head coach that I had let those coaches down, um, that I had coaches that were on my staff, that we got so caught up in everything going on. And then my mother passed away and I decided to step away from football. And then I let those, I had two brand new coaches on staff and I let those guys down because we got so caught up in the season and all that's going on. Um, and so developing this to me was a way to, make sure that those guys 
don't fall through the cracks just because we get distracted by admin parents all the things that go on fundraising and then all of a sudden this guy is like you and me were at the end of our first year of coaching and we don't know any more than we did day one yeah um so this was a way to to make sure that didn't happen i want to be completely honest man i wish i i had the coordinated coordinator master class because that first year as an offensive coordinator it, i i faked it till i made it oh, yeah. i had no idea what i was doing like i had a, an inkling of an idea but it's so you're not prepared to go from a position go a group to essentially being a head coach of the entire side of the ball how to set up practice what drills you need to run how how are you going to teach the coaches your system so they can turn around and be successful when they're teaching the players the same thing that was hectic man that, that's when i started going bald it's the hardest the the biggest job of a head coach and a coordinator is to teach your assistant coaches your vision and it's also the hardest job because usually the coordinator and the head coach have a great knowledge of X's and O's, but you cannot teach every single kid on the team. That, that's why football um, – and these are all, I, I, you know, the emails that will be going out this week. This is all the research that I've done. Um, football is the only sport where research shows that being good at the sport does not equal being a great coach. And it's because football is the only sport where we don't need one guy. We need 10. And yeah. you're very unlikely to have a staff of 11 Hall of Famers. So we've got to be able to teach our coaches. Yeah. Sorry. He was telling me, I don't know if you can see, I have an Iron Man bobblehead. Nice. And off to the side, I've got a Thanos and Thor bobblehead that he wants to play with. Ah. I think all my bobbleheads are upstairs. Mine are all Star Wars, though. Okay, Mandalorian. What'd you think? I haven't finished it. Oh, I love it. okay. I love I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ruin it. It's, it's I haven't watched season. I haven't watched season two. I need to get on it. Yeah, that's for me, not for you. All right, look at this. This and coach, here it is. Richard says, "I wish there had been a course like this 30 years ago." So yes, it will most likely be great. Leg up. Yeah, you do the volunteer thing, and you just if if all you want to do as a volunteer is be a guy that can ride the bus and set up pads, that's cool. But if you are really prepared to contribute in a meeting, now you're a football coach. Um, and what I find a lot of times is guys who think they're prepared because they did some other stuff. Um, again, you just got to know like what really fits, and I think that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Chris already got it. Just got the coordinator master class. Looking forward to all of it. Sweet. Dude, you, you are not going to be disappointed. And Sweet. also I want to talk back, just if you get the football coaching 101, mm -hmm. understanding what goes on in a play and how it fits inside of whatever offense or defense your team runs. So when you go to a uh, in the meeting, you're just not randomly pulling a play that you see on Saturday or Sunday and going, hey, we need to run this. Because I'm going to be completely honest. I did that. I know you probably did that. Yeah, and to love older them. coaches, you look like a, like an ass. Like yeah. You're like, okay, okay, Daddy, buddy. Yeah. How are we going to do that? Daddy, I don't do it. Got you, buddy. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's and, – and football coaching 101 by itself is, is going to get you the basics of, like, being – I don't like to use the wrong words, but competent coach. Yeah. Yeah. You hear you hear him? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no. Sorry. Hold on, buddy. I'm, I'm doing something. Sorry, he's he's so excited. Hey, it's fine. He's just pointing to to the Thor and Thanos. He wants to play with it so bad. It is, is it, it, it's okay. Just knocked it down. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. It's okay. It's not chubby Thor, is it? No, 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 no. It's okay. a, I'll All get right. it. Hold on. Hold on. Spelt Thor. My nerd's coming out, guys. I hate Chubby Thor. I hate it. It's fine, dude. I'm going to show everybody. Okay. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. That's what I love about Lock. Can you see it? Nice. Yes. Nice. I don't know where I'm going to put it. Coaches, help me out. Here, here's my, I'm thinking somewhere up here. Or maybe right down there. I'm not sure yet. 
So that's that's it. And he he wants to play with it so bad. I guess. He doesn't. He's now he's telling me he doesn't want to play with it. Okay. So all right, look, we are. He's already sold, man. He knows how great this course is and ready to go, man. Nice, nice. You're gonna love it. All right, here's another one. Chris says, "Oh, Chris, it's okay. Yes, we do the same. We were, okay, so we're talking about. Okay, buddy. Uh, I'll probably have, have to go in a minute. Hmm? Where was that? Because he was talking. About, oh, Richard." My first year in middle school tried to be complicated and went 0 and 7. The second year we had two runs, three pass plays, went 7 and 2, losing to the same team in the first game and the championship game. Yeah. So, Simple. okay, I, I know you. Are you a big outside zone guy? Like you, you run four inside, outside, power, counter, and toss. Five. And toss. You only have two. Which two do you run? See, they complement each other so much. I get asked that a lot. It's probably, I mean, for simplicity's sake, it's probably power counter. A lot of youth coaches, I'll say, look, we were just run power counter, toss, and trap. Um, if I could only have one play, like if I could only have one play, it would probably be outside zone. But at the same time, it wouldn't be very effective by itself. So okay. Maybe if I could run outside zone and counter something like that okay you can you can say it but i'm sorry guys this is <laughs> it's the family man it's the family richard you don't have to say anything we we both know we're nerds 100 percent love to see connor this is what this is all about i have a two-year-old and i'm holding an eight month old watching this right now yeah man he's <laughs> he's in heaven right now playing with the the iron man he is a big marvel fan um Okay, we're nerding out right now. Have you seen the Snyder cut of uh, Justice League? No, nah, I don't. Are you a big movies. Are you a big DC fan? Um, I mean the comics, yeah, not but the not movies. the movies. I don't watch that many movies. What was the, the last movie you've seen? We're talking football. I want to get into. I mean, the last like new movie that I watched, or just in general, like. It was a Star Wars movie that was on. You know, it was whatever the last Star Wars that was on TV was. I can't change the channel. <laughs> So that's like your Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. When it's on, I'll it's you, like I'll tell you what I just the most recent thing that I watched was the Age of the Samurai on Netflix. Oh, nice. How was that? Great. Great. Okay. But that's like a history channel show, not a not a drama. Okay. All right. That's okay. He's going nuts. Uh, coaches, <laughs> seriously though, if you haven't already you, and by you, the way, it's it's totally not system based. No, it's very much that's the, that's another thing I love about it. Not being a specific system, and you touch on both offense and defense, and which special teams. You're one of the few coaches that actually have, dude. You've you've got the the holy trinity of offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, and head coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. Were you ever a special cool. teams coordinator? I've always I'm a dictator when I was a head coach, so. Yeah, I've, I've run a lot of special teams. I'm a big – I love long snapping. Um, I'm an onside kick guy. Spread punt. But, like, spread punt is just Chris Fors spread punt, shield punt book. Um, I mean, it's not com – I don't know if complicated special teams because you only do it you – know, I don't punt, punt nine times in a season. Stop punting. Um, you know. Okay, I keep it very simple. I go for two. Oh, I love that, man. I freaking love that. Yeah. What your single wing in that in that like yeah, the unbalanced single wing is the base yep. package. Yeah. A lot hey. of coaches will also run the power eye, but it's all it's all just our same uh, offense out of a different look. Oh, I love it. Well, Joe, thank you so much for being here. Sorry. I appreciate Connor, it. Man. Hey Connor, come say bye. Say bye-bye. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Bye, yeah. Connor. He's not going to sleep anytime. You got the headphones on. He can't hear me. He can't, but I'm gonna I'm talk him. to him anyway. Don't talk. Yeah. yeah, buddy. All right, coaches. Again, if you haven't, seriously, check it out get it it's freaking amazing and until next time let's just let's just make simple i need to do something like just be simple like a like my phrase just just be simple i i came up with one called coach simple play fast win and it's beautiful we're gonna leave on that one <laughs> coaches y'all have a good night man